Hey folks, welcome back. Last week of the semester for us here. Um, what we've got today, sorry, um, is we've got uh, something called the superposition principle in Coulomb's law. So what you're going to see here is um, a little bit different type of calculation for us. So um, your quiz Wednesday, Thursday will be on the basics again, Coulomb's law, and then the concept of the superposition. Okay. So here we go. Um, what would a small positive charge blue dot do near a large positive charge, the big red dot? Well, for us, this thing should get pushed away, right? AKA repelled. No, hopefully difficulty there. All right. So it's getting pushed to the right. So what would it do if we put it next to a large negative charge? Again, that one would get pulled to the right, meaning that for us, it would get attracted to the right side, right? Well, what happens now? So what we should see is that, yes, it should move to the right. Again, it's going to get pushed. Let me get my laser pointer. So it's going to get pushed from this side, right? And then it'll get pulled from this side. So it will get repelled to the right and attracted to the right as well. Okay? Now it's a little bit different, right? So now what we did is it's not in a straight line. So now we have to work a little bit with angles. So what we're going to see here is that with angles, we're going to get that repulsion or that push that way. We're going to get a pull that way, right? Now, the resulting vector should be the direction that it moves. So it should move in some sort of a nice little path towards that, all right? So uh, a Van de Graaff generator now is one of these uh, silver domed mechanisms, right? Um, so what ends up happening is it has a way of basically scraping off through via friction the electrons. Okay, so if it scrapes off all of the electrons, the dome or the charge on the dome should be all positive, right? Hopefully that's a one that makes sense. Okay, so let's say that we bring an atom sort of close to it, right? So there's our atom. Okay. What we want to know now is what are the electrons and protons going to do? So if this is a heavily, heavily positive charge right here, what should happen is, is we should get some movement, right? Again, the positive nuclei should move away. The negative electrons on the outside should move towards it, right? So once we get here, what should take place then is it should pull it toward it, meaning that because of these negative electrons out here, even though the they're repelled, the positive nuclei is repelled, it is going to get a little bit closer and it should move. Okay. So the whole atom ends up being attracted to the Van de Graaff generator. All right. Now let's say it's just our hand. Okay. Now here again, our hand may not be strong enough to move. Right. So if the, if the attraction between the electrons and the, and the Van de Graaff generator is strong enough, what should the electrons do? Again, because we're not going to be, it's not going to pull our hand towards that thing. It doesn't have that sort of a quote unquote tractor beam. Okay. So what we should end up seeing is these things should want to move, right? And again, if you think of Coulomb's law, the closer we get to it, the more likely these are to experience that force of being pulled. The further away we get, the, the less force that it is going to have in order to try and jump. So that's what we end up seeing. These things jump, they move, they spark, they arc, okay? And when they spark and they arc, it's like that first picture you saw on the beginning of the lecture, right? Those are two huge uh, Van de Graaff generators at, at a museum in Boston. And what it does is it basically shoots into the cage and the cage protects people from that, okay? So uh, we didn't talk superposition, I know. I uh, kind of messed those notes up. I meant to do that last week, but then I just ran out of time. So. All right, so particle B pulls on A with a force of 40 newtons. So particle B pulls on A with a force of 40 newtons. Particle C pulls on particle A with a force of 10 newtons, right? And again, because particle C is so far away, that's why its force is going to be a little bit less. We want to calculate the net force on particle A due to the other two particles. So what we end up seeing here is, is that we're going to also have to include direction. So we've got a 40 newton force and we've got a 10 newton force, right? So we see 
there is our 40 newton force, which is substantially large because it's closer. And there is our 10 newton force between A and C and A and B. All right. So as you can see, the answer should be 50 newtons to the right. Okay. <clears throat> so when two forces act on an object, now a little different version. All right. We have FA at 55 newtons, and it is in the x direction. FB is 77 newtons, and it is in the negative y direction. What is the net force and include the direction? Okay. So what we see here is we've got a 55 newton force. All right. In the y, in the x direction, 77 newton in the negative y. For us, we're just going to find the force using the old the good old school Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So because these are acting in opposite directions, basically what we have is we have the sides of a right triangle. Okay. So we'll put our a in there and we'll run 55 squared. Calculator just so I can get you some semi quasi real numbers. So 55 squared, that's 3025, uh, 77 squared. And again, you can use negative here. It's not going to matter. It's not going to be differentiated. So we got 59.2 or 5929. So we add those two together. And plus this one, we get 8,954. All right. Now, once we have that 8, 1954. Remember, see how this thing is squared here? So we're going to have to take the square root of that. All right. And we get 94.62557794. All right. So this is what this ends up looking like, right? <clears throat> and again, the forces, the directionality of the forces don't necessarily matter. Okay. We know that that net force there. Is the way that it's going to travel. It's going to travel downwards, so to speak, or in the uh, kind of negative y direction. So, with this picture, what we can see now is, is we want to find the angle in which this thing is going to travel, right? So, if we want to find that spot there, that's where we can use a whole bunch of different trig functions. We could use sine, we could use cosine, we could use tangent, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the tangent. So the way that we find that is the tangent of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent, right? So all I did here was just take the tangent inverse. So if I take 77 divided by 55, that's 1.4. I go second tangent of that 1.4, and what I see is it should be 54.46. Here again, make sure your calculator set into degrees. We've done our time doing radians. Now we're going to do degrees. Okay. The other way you could have done it is you, you could have done opposite over hypotenuse. So, right? So you could have done the sine inverse of 77, 77 divided by 94.6. And lo and behold, same answer. A couple decimal points are a little different, but it's basically 54.5 degrees. Okay. You could have done cosine. All right. You get the drift. Okay. Now, full blown Coulomb's law problem with superposition principle in place. All right. So, what we've got here is we want to know what force does the negative charge experience. Okay. So, a nanometer, that's 10 to the negative nine. All right. So, that's our total, blah, blah, blah. All right, so the blue to red is completely in the y direction. So we use Coulomb's law, right? 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. The charge for a positive Q1 is going to be 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. This will be a negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th, and then 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Right? So there we go. That's what we're looking at. Again, we're going to just plug that into a calculator. I'm assuming that you folks are pretty good with that. You can, if you want to, put that K up on the top, like I showed last week, absolutely fine. So we find that the force of our red, blue to red here is negative 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10 newtons. All right. What that means is this thing is getting attracted this way, right? All right. So force of green to red is also completely, this one's completely in the Y direction. So Again, we're going to see the same thing. A positive E is that positive 1.6. A negative E is that negative 1.6. 
two nanometers is two times 10 to the ninth. There's Coulomb's law constant, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. We again punch that one in. This thing is going to be a negative 5.7 times 10 to the negative 11th. Again, now it's also getting pulled this way. So not only is it getting pulled up, but it's also getting pulled to the right, so to speak. Okay? So we know both of those. So now in order to find our total force, right, right, we're going to take the blue to red. So this top one, square it. Take this green to red, negative 5.7, and square it, all right? And then we're going to take the square root of that to find our total, all right? So once we take those two, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 10th and negative 5.7 times 10 to the negative 11th, what we're going to see is that force is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 20th. Square root that, and what we find is that's our total force. Now, plus or minus doesn't necessarily matter for us there, all right? The 2.37, that's the bit that matters, okay? This, the negative just says, hey, this is a force that's just acting this way. It's going a different, an op, or opposite of the way that it necessarily wants to go. So the negative just works out nice for us, okay? All right, so then here's what I want you to do, all right? Try this one out, all right? So sphere A is located at the origin and has a charge of 6 times 10 to the negative 4 Coulomb. Sphere B is 2 meters away on the x-axis, has a charge of negative 5 times 10 to the negative 4 Coulombs. Sphere C is located at 3 and has a charge of negative 7 times 10 to the negative 4 Coulombs. Determine the net force on A and find what direction, or find the direction of the force with respect to the x-axis. So part A wants the net force like we just did. Part B wants the angle of it with respect to the x-axis. So give it a shot. There are your answers. Hopefully in the process of giving it a shot, you got those numbers. If not, that's okay. We'll run through this, all right? So here's our drawing, all right? There's sphere C up on the y-axis, three meters away. Sphere B on the x-axis, two meters away, all right? So if we want to do A to C, right? So A to C, if we look here, that's a positive. C is a negative. That thing's going to get pulled, right? Because of charge C being a negative, it is going to try to attract this positive charge. So what do we do? We put in the 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Our Q of A is going to be this 6.00 times 10 to the negative fourth. Q of C is going to be this negative six, seven times 10 to the negative fourth. We should find out once we do all of that stuff together that we get negative 419 and a half newtons of force being pulled or attracted that way. Right? Part B, or A to B, right? So if we go A to B, charge A is being pulled because, again, positive and negative. There's an attractive force there, right? 8.99 for K. QA is still 6 times 10 to the negative 4. QB is, is now negative 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Our distance is 2 meters. We don't want to change it. So what we end up seeing is we get negative 674.3 newtons of force. Okay? The negative sign on these just means that the force is attractive. In this case, the sign does not indicate the direction of the force. It just means that it's going to be pulled that direction. All right. So what we're able to say then is, is because it's an attractive force, it's just acting that way, just acting that way. So it's just acting up with 419, it's just acting right. So at this point in time now, we're doing really, really well because now we've got the two sides of our triangle. And we can slide this up so if it so it looks easier so that you see it going off to the right. That's fine. So again, the way that we're going to find this one here is, is we're going to take that 419 and square it, take the negative 674 and square it. So what's 419.5 squared? That's like 176,674.3 squared, 455,000, right? So if I take those together, 
then what I end up with is about 631,000. Take that to the 0.5, I get 794. All right. So now if we want this angle here, what we need to know is, all right, that thing's going at 794. What is this force down here again? So A to B is still going to be that 674, right? So once we know that, then this is going to be the adjacent side. That's the hypotenuse. So we can do the cosine of theta is equal to the force AB over the force net. Again, adjacent hypotenuse, right? So I just fill the negatives because it's just a force for us, right? We divide those two together. We get 0.8491. Now, to get cosine over, I'm going to take the cosine inverse of both sides. Cosine inverse times cosine just gives us theta. So the cosine inverse of that should give us 31.88. Okay. Um, that's really it for the day. Um, make sure you check out practice problems with this concept of superposition just so that you feel comfortable with it. And uh, we'll talk later. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.